Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What is the most infuriating case of double standards you've come across? <laughs> Was at a Christmas party. One of the girls attending, over 20, thought it would be hilarious to fondle one of the little brothers of her friend, 14 fifteenths, at the time. At first, I said nothing but it kept happening and the little brother seemed more and more confused with each occurrence. I was the one who brought it up, got slapped in the face for it, by the abuser, and was yelled at by multiple people. Wasn't invited to the Christmas party again, fuck all of them. Teachers, doctors etc were present, the so called educated. <laughs> My cousin has been in court for 10 years because of child support problems with his ex-wife. If genders were swapped he would be in jail for these same issues. She does not pay child support, adhere to court ordered child visitation, ignores court ordered restrictions on stalking him and family members, files false suits using Facebook posts as evidence against the order, does not feed the children properly, they come home usually in the same clothing they left in because she's too cheap to wash them and sees it as his responsibility. She owes over $100,000 in fines and is still facing no real consequences other than mail notices about non-payment. My so's father missed one payment years ago, they suspended his business license and threatened a lien on his house. Her mother still owes $10k plus for drinking away the college fund and non-payment of child support with again, no consequences. Fathers have no rights in Massachusetts, the mother is always right, even as a documented drug addict. Which is yet another story along the same lines. When I worked for a supermarket in the UK that rhymes with bait rose, I bleached my hair. I'm a man. They ordered me to cut it all off then changed my shift to be an outdoor trolley collector. And I had to wear a hat. The person who told me to do this had bleached blonde hair. They were not a man. My daughter and I have some things that have become tradition. We always go to Starbucks before school on Fridays, we like to go eat sushi for lunch on Tuesdays when she gets out of school early and we usually go just the two of us. I get all kinds of dirty looks, because people assume that a 45 year old guy who's out with a beautiful young woman, 16 going on 25, is some sort of lecherous monster. It sucks, but I've been learning to brush it off. In work, if I am 5 minutes late they will certainly let me know about it. But if I stay behind 15 minutes later than my finish, not even a mention. Edit, since this comment blew up, I'll give you a story that relates this problem to the downfall of a company, paraphrasing my own version of the story. So, there was a person who worked for a company. This person did all their work, and the work of some others, which in turn was keeping the company afloat. Now, this person does not do this for any particular reason other than they are a good worker and doesn't really receive any praise, maybe a thank you here and there, from management. One day, this person has had to come in late and as soon as they enter the building and clock in, they get a text message from their boss asking them to see the boss. So they see the boss, and the boss says we have a zero tolerance policy on lateness, if you are late again you will be fired. The person tries to defend themselves by bringing up all the extra work they do, but the boss replies you were not asked to do those things, but you are required to be on time. So the person decides they will only do what is asked of them from now on. Now things are starting to go wrong and the company is behind on certain contracts. This person continues to do only what is asked of them, and eventually the company goes under. The moral here is to recognize the good and bad of your employees. One comment that only focuses on a negative situation without any mention of the extra good that the person has done, can be incredibly costly. But by just saying you should not be late, but I do appreciate the extra work you do, we can work something out can save you in the long run. My personal experience. I was about 8 months pregnant. My cousin's girlfriend was about 7 months pregnant. We were all at my aunt's house. My cousin's GF, 
let's call her Christy. Had a reputation of being not very bright, but also very arrogant. She insisted that it was perfectly fine to smoke during her pregnancy, because the baby's lungs were not developed yet. Wow. Just. Wow. No matter what evidence my aunt showed Christy, she stuck with her stubborn, selfish, belief. She smoked cigarettes up until six months pregnant, and smoked pot from a street drug dealer up until the car ride to the hospital to deliver. She also drank two alcoholic beverages a day, we all suspected possibly more. We were all appalled, but there was nothing we could do to stop her. I had not said one thing to her about it, because it just wasn't my place to. My aunt had said enough. On the other hand, I completely gave up alcohol, I never smoked, all coffee, caffeine, getting my hair and nails done, sushi, and everything that my midwife said could possibly cause harm to the unborn baby. I even switched to a natural deodorant. Back to my aunt's house. My aunt had come back from a store, with sub hoagies, fresh deli meats, and cheese. We all started making ourselves subs, except for Christy. Who was busy smoking a blunt in the bedroom. As I was eating my turkey sandwich, Christy comes out from the bedroom, high as a kite, looks at me dead seriously, and says, you're not supposed to be eating that. Deli meat is unsafe for the baby. It took every ounce of energy in my body, to not hurl myself screaming in her face. 35 years ago and it still pisses me off. I got detention in high school, no biggie, I did the crime. However I was scheduled to work so I asked for detention to be delayed for one day. Request denied. I pointed out that football players routinely had theirs rescheduled to accommodate games and practice. Only answer I got was that's different. When I was about 16, my dad, a Baptist missionary pastor, once preached a two-hour sermon on the perils of pornography and how absolutely evil it was, gotta save yourself for marriage, etc. He had also beaten the shit out of me for catching me with porn a couple months prior, that same night when we got home from church, he asked me to bring him his phone that he'd left in the car. I opened it to find months of daily porn watching in his internet history LMAO. One of the regional managers goes to state prison for over a year for DWI. If you know anything about Texas DWI laws, that means he got caught multiple times. Comes out of a prison, immediately transferred to corporate and made a director. Brand new employee is rear-ended in stop slash go traffic on the highway. No injuries, but forced to take a drug test. Fails for weed, immediately fired. When I was a school nurse I was always alone with whatever children needed assistance, even after I would ask for help. New male school nurse started, all the sudden three other people are available just to watch him. I felt terrible for the guy, but literally no one trusted him with the diabetic kid or the kid with the trach alone. Oh he can't be alone. But me a woman was never questioned, double standards abound. <laughs> Senior year in high school. The football team got brand new uniforms, gear, and buses for tournaments paid for by the school. They had the only bus with AC and window tinting, and nice Alcoa rims, reserved for their use only. They even cancelled a couple elective classes my senior year to free up money for the team. The girls softball team had to do year-long fundraisers to pay for everything, down to the softballs, uniforms, and chartering buses for tournaments. So that year, the football team won one game, in preseason, lost every other game. The girls softball team went to and won their division at the state level. Oh, and the star boys baseball player got busted with marijuana on campus for the third or fourth time, was told to sit out two games, he could pick which ones, not even detention. Meanwhile, shortly later another kid, a loner, got busted with marijuana once, and got expelled, had to take summer school to advance to the next grade. Priorities It's considered kind and noble to put down a pet that is old and suffering, 
even if you can't really tell how they are feeling or coping but if someone is suffering majorly and in pain and at the end of their life and is fully communicating, they still can't give you permission to go forward with euthanasia. My high school English teacher would hear something even remotely phone-like and explode whose phone is that? If no one answered right away Ahe would pace the desks, and if anyone acted suspicious she would have them empty their pockets, bags, etc. on the desk. If there was a phone, she confiscated it. If there were any unread notifications, she would read them aloud. But, every now and again, she would do her whole explosion, then glance down and giggle and say oh, it's my phone and then text away. Also, she was a terrible English teacher. For purposes of this story, I have two little brothers. They do not share mothers. We were eating breakfast with the mother of one of them. The other one is a picky eater, he has issues with texture, but he never complains, just powers through as best he can. She got up to get coffee, and they traded plates. Her bio son had almost cleaned his, and her stepson had eaten about half, before the trade. Then they both got up and took their plates to her like they'd finished, and she accepted them both as done. You see, when her bio son says he's full, she believes him. When her stepson says he's full, she doesn't. So they made it look like the step had eaten more because they knew the bio's plate would be accepted in any condition. I never told them that I know they did this, and probably have for a while, but I love that they figured a way around her double standards. A girl I dated in high school would often vent to me about her friends' boyfriends doing the same things she would do to me. For example, we'd see each other every weekend. She wanted to see me more often. But we lived 40 minutes from each other, gas was expensive, I was broke, and I had homework and extracurriculars, so I was busy during the week. She got mad and angrily told me to let her know when I cared enough to pencil her into my calendar. Not too much later, she was on the phone with me, telling me how her friend's boyfriend said the same thing to her friend and what an asshole he was for it. When I called her out, she just made up some crap about how our situation was different. <laughs> me and a classmate wrote the same answer with different wordings in a test. My classmate got the answer marked wrong. Luckily because I am her favorite, I don't enjoy it, I was able to negotiate with her and she changed the mark. Although it's still infuriating that it actually happened in the first place and yes she didn't like him at the time. We had a really expensive camping trip in middle school. Get to this place and the girls rooms are in camp, thick clay walls, fridges, plugs. Totally fucking decked out. The boys cabins. A 15 minute walk away from the main place, and right next to a dam, the walls were cardboard and the place had more holes than a block of Swiss cheese. I still feel robbed. When I passed my driving test, I had about three years no claims bonus with motorbikes that no insurer would let me use for a car. I guess it makes some amount of sense because they're different vehicles of different sizes with different risks. What makes absolutely no sense, is how having my motorbike stolen should negatively impact my premiums for car insurance when the difference in stealing a bike vs a car is vastly different and I was living at a completely different address in another city. Yet I'm still forced to pay increased premiums for 5 years. If having a bike stolen is relevant to increasing car insurance premiums, how is riding one safely for 3 years not relevant to reducing them? Insurance is a fucking racket. When we bought our house my wife set up all the utilities. I'm on the spectrum, I really really hate dealing with that stuff, bills, money. I go to work and earn the money, she does the budgeting and makes sure everything gets paid. It's crazy to me how often a company will have to have me get on the phone to make a change or whatever on an account that she set up. I'm the husband so I must be in charge of the finances. Does anyone have a link to the story of a guy whose child almost got kidnapped? IIRC it was a story where a man was waiting for his wife outside a store with their child in a stroller. A woman just walks up, screams that he's kidnapping her child, grabs the stroller, and calmly walks off. 
The man got tackled and beat by everyone there, to the point of having broken ribs, and all the while he was screaming that the baby was his and she was the kidnapper. It was only stopped because the wife came out and confronted the woman, who just calmly let go of the stroller and walked off without anyone stopping her. When the police got there, the husband was reprimanded for looking suspicious. My sister, a lawyer, recently pointed out to me that it is not legally possible for a woman to rape a man. A few weeks later I sent her a hypothetical I saw of a guy being passed out and a girl having sex with him. I asked her if that would be rape. And she said no. I said okay, I know it's legally not rape, but would it would still be morally rape right? She said no, it's not possible for a man to be raped, legally or morally. Glad to know a lawyer thinks it doesn't matter when a man is raped by a woman. Got written up for wearing nice shorts to work. In an IT position. No customer facing roles at all. My female manager and all other women in the company were permitted to wear any type of dress or skirt. My manager always wore her athletic skirt she worked out in. It was less than knee length. Fuck you Black Hills Energy. I went to a small Bible college where we had to sign a contract promising not to drink or have premarital sex while enrolled there. At one point a couple was caught having sex, the guy was put on some sort of light probation, of course he was still able to play on the school's basketball team, and the girl was immediately expelled. When I was a sophomore, a group of freshman girls all decided to go around racking guys because they thought the reactions were hysterical. I made it very clear if any of them did that to me. I would slap the shit out of them. Lo and behold after several other guys were hit and nothing done, one of them surprised me in the hallway and racked me. I promptly slapped her across the face and was sent to the principal's office by a female teacher who witnessed the whole thing. Thankfully, the principal was more understanding and just sent me back to class. Still, whole thing pisses me off over a decade later. <coughs> Middle-aged woman I used to work with was always complaining about her son-in-law and one day she was complaining to me and saying how he doesn't clean her daughter's car off when it snows and that is something the man should be doing. And I responded with sure, but how would you feel if he said the same thing about dishes and being something the woman should do? She paused and then said she never thought of it that way lol. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.